Okay, so now that we've gotten our solutions, right, we had our solution in the form of P, P is equal to R, P is zero, right? So our function has time sitting up there in the exponent, right? So this is an exponential function of the form, you know, F of X equal R to the X. X is now showing up in the exponent as opposed to something like x equals x squared, where x is raised f of x equals x squared, where x is raised to some. Okay? So when we have these exponents, you might want to, uh, you know, remind yourself of some of the laws of how exponents combine. Okay? So that's what we'll go over in this short video. So the first law of exponents is that if you multiply two things with the same base, then you add their exponents, right? So if I have, let's say, r to the x times r to the y, right? Then this is the same thing as r to the x plus y, right? And so this represents r multiplied by itself x times. This represents r multiplied by itself y times. So if I multiply these two together, now I've multiplied by r x times and y times. So I've multiplied r together by x plus y times. Okay? Let's so do a short little example of that. Let's say we have, I don't know, 2 to the x, maybe where x is going to be 2 squared, and then times 2. Right? Well, that's the same thing as 2 to the fifth, because we just add those exponents together when you multiply them together. Okay? So then law number 2, so again, is going to be how do we like commute these things or distribute? Sorry, how do we distribute an x? So if r to the x to the y. So now in this case, I have r times itself x times, and then I have this number multiplied by itself y times. So I'm doing r to the x and then I'm doing it to the y. So it's different than doing it to the x multiplying by r to the y. Okay, so in this case, we multiply those exponents together. R x. So I'm multiplying r to the x, r to itself x times y times. An example of that would be, let's say, two, two to the one half. Right, so then in this case, you know, that looks like Two to the one half would be square root of two, and then squared would give us two to the one. Two. Okay, so we just multiply these two together. Um, to do another example, let's say three cubed times uh, three cubed to the fourth. That's the same thing as three to the fourth. All right. And the third law is basically how to interpret a negative exponent. Okay, so if I have r to the negative x, this is the same thing as having 1 over r to the Okay, so the negative power means put it in the denominator. Okay, so an example of that would be 2 negative 2. Right, this is the same thing as 1 over 2 squared, or 1 over 4. This means, you know, bring, bring 2 down by multiplying by itself negative doesn't really make sense when you think about it like that. So we write it as 1 over 2 to the 2, which is 1 over 2 multiplied by itself 2 times, which makes more sense than trying to say 2 multiplied by itself negative 2. So really, the negative sign means put it in the denominator. OK? And then our fourth law, fourth law is what do you do when you have r to the x over r to the y, right? In this case, you can think about this as r to the x times r to the minus y, right? Based on law three, and then using law two, this then says that we add these exponents, so that gives us r x minus y, okay? So the identity is r to the x divided by r to the y gives us r to the minus y. Make this clear that that's from the exponent. Okay, so maybe an example of this, say, 
I have 4 squared over 4. And in this case, I have 4 squared minus 3. Add these exponents, I get 4 to the minus 1. Or 1 over 4. Okay? Okay, so we're basically canceling out these. Cancel out the 2 on top, and that becomes a 1 on the bottom. Okay? And then our next law is more of an identity. Okay, so law 5 says that r to the 1 is equal to r. Right, because this is r multiplied by itself one time. That's just to do 1r. Right, so any example would just be 10 to the 1. That just gives us 10. Okay. And then our final law is a different identity. And this one says that r to the 0 is equal to 1. Right, so this says that any number to the 0th power, right, that means multiply this number by itself 0 times. That gives us the multiplicative identity, 1. Okay? Any number you have, if it's ever raised to 0, if I had 2 to the 0, that gives me 1. Right? You could think about this as saying, like, okay, what if I had 2 over 2, right? So that'd be like 2 to the 1 over 2 to the 1, which by our laws would give us 2 to the 1 minus 1 equals 0. But we know that 2 over 2 is 1, right? So you could think about it like that. Okay? And the last thing that we want to remember is, and this isn't a law, but this is just you know common base for exponential functions. Is the number e, which is uh, you know it's an irrational number, so it's like two point seven one eight two eight. 1, 8, dot, 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 right? It's just, it's a repeating decimal. There's no pattern to it, but it's some really long number that goes on forever. And this is a common base in lots of scientific problems for reasons that we'll get into once we cover the derivative. But, you know, commonly you'll see functions that look like this, f of x equals e to the x, right? And it's, this is just e, right? This is just the same thing as r to the x, where r is equal to this number e, special number. Okay, and this is so common that they call this the exponential function. 